she got mad at Carl for having
Welcome to Peterborough United Methodist Church. I'm glad to see all these new faces and all our friends that have been here for a while. For those of you who don't know me, I am Pastor Tom, and for all of you online, I am still Pastor Tom. I want to just let you all know what's happening today is it's called Lady Sunday, where we empower our lady to do many different things, from preaching to being the interim pastor to the liturgist, to special music, to our choir, to our organist, to our ushers, to our greeters, and I'm hopefully if I missed you know, our people who will do our flowers. So if I've missed anybody, I'm sorry, but I try to remember all y'all. Hopefully I did well. And I'm gonna pass the baton off to our lay leader, Jeff Hill. Good morning. So it's Sunday. The choir arrived uh, a lot earlier than the rest of us to practice today. The liturgist, Andy, has been studying God's word that he's going to share with us, as well as the prayers and the other readings. Richard and Amy prepared the altar, brought the flowers. And even though he isn't here to worship with us in person, Jim Poplin arrived at some point this week, I'm sure, just to make sure that everything was just right in this sanctuary for us. And I'm sure later on today, Sue Poplin is going to write someone a card of encouragement, thanking them for what they did here. And I should never forget Linda, who has corralled all these children, half of whom she transported here, just to ensure that they have a welcoming spiritual home. We are Peterborough United Methodist Church, and welcome. We're really glad you're here. Laity Sunday is pretty cool because it's a reminder to us that church should not be something where we just show up and it happens to us. That it should be the place where we minister together. It isn't just up to our pastor to do that. We all have a ministry. We all have gifts in ministry. And church should be the place where we encourage one another. We warm each other like coals together and empower one another to be faithful to the work that God has called us to do in healing and transformation and witness. I'm so glad you could be here with us today on this special day. Uh, Susan Lindquist is going to, to bring the message. Reggie is going to be bringing ministry and song. Uh, it's going to be a really great Sunday. So let's see first if we have any announcements. I know I was given one. Do you have any, Andy? The uh, children on uh, uh, the 30th are going to come dressed up in Halloween costumes, so um, everybody that wants to bring a pocket full of treats or something to give them out in the fellowship hall after our service, that would be nice. Well, that was the only announcement I had. Does anyone have any others? Justine. Justine. Okay, so repeating that for our online viewers, the holiday stroll is uh, December 19th? November. No, November 19th, and that an email going out about, uh, uh, there will be a planning meeting uh, happening in a couple of weeks, and there will be email with further details. Anything else? Anybody that would be interested, please get that word out. 
and we'll be prepared for them in fellowship hall with all their reptiles and snakes. <laughs> <laughs> So November 5th, 1.30, invite little kids and big kids and fully grown kids because we are having snakes in the church. Uh, it's, it's a, uh, it's a what, it's, what's the official name of this? The reptiles? Reptiles of New England. Reptiles of New England are coming here. And this is uh, going to be a great opportunity, not just for our youth, but also to invite other youth in from the community. Anything else? Pastor Tom, did you uh, say that this is the day that the Lord has made? Did you cover that? No, sir. Okay. Okay, you said you're doing the welcome, and that was under welcome. I didn't want to be still in your thunder. Okay, okay. All right. All right, then. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Please rise if you're able and join me uh, in saying the call to worship. It's found on your screen as well as on the bulletin. We are all called to experience grace and share the gift of life in Jesus. We gather to sing ourselves to God. We remember the faith that lived in those who loved us. We know the Lord's song includes verses of grace. To the in every scene of trauma, tragedy, and menace, we discover love already at work. Amen. <clears throat> Please continue to stand and join us in singing How Great Thou Art. It's hymn number 77 in the Methodist hymnal. Words will also be on the screen.
and join with me in our opening prayer, which is found in your bulletin. You call us to be a light in the darkness, your voice in the wilderness, your hope in the hopeless. You give us strength in our weakness, peace in our gentleness, words and boldness to proclaim more of you and all of us. And will you join me in the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we'll now hear from the choir. You may be seated. Amen. Now invite our children and youth to come up, and Susan is going to bring the children's message. Testing on this mic. Is it working? Yep. All right, boys and girls, oh my goodness gracious me. Can I ask this morning that um, Thea share her, her special something with us? You've got a joy, don't you? Ashlyn made it. You made it? Where did Ashlyn you? Ashlyn made it. Ashlyn made it? And did she give it to you as a gift? <gasps> what a wonderful way to lift you up and get, make you feel special, huh? Oh boy, that ties right in with what I'm going to talk about. So yeah, so, so can I ask that you guys all gather around here? Because I'm going to ask you to build something today. Oh boy. So can we make a letter U right here? And big guys, I may ask you to, do, to work with some of the bigger stuff. So Thea, come and sit right here, okay, so that I can put stuff in front of you, okay? Okay, so first of all, it's Laity Sunday. What does laity mean? What do you think, Thea? Um, dogs? Dogs. Well, I 
I suppose if we had a dog in the congregation today, that dog would be laity. Because that dog is not a preacher, right? That dog is not our pastor, but that dog is here in worship with us. Your dog? Your dog, Sadie? Oh, okay. Wow. Maudie? Maudie and Molly are your dogs. Okay. Can we talk about them a little bit later? Can, will you tell me about them a little bit later? Okay, okay. So, anybody else? What's laity? You are laity. Did you know that? <laughs> Linda is laity. Did you know that? Amy is laity. Did you know that? Ashlyn, you are laity. The pe- no, well, we have all kinds of people. Charlie Derby is laity. Justine is laity. Tanya's laity. If we're not a pastor and we're in worship, a worship community together, and we lift each other up to, to um, further the kingdom of God in our church, we are laity. Because we're all helpers on this path. Okay? So that's the first important thing you need to know about today. All right? The second thing is, you know that I like symbols, right? What's a symbol? A sign of something. What else? What do you think? Carly, can you give me a definition of what a symbol is? Think about it. Okay, think about it. If I show you a picture of a pine tree, and it's in a stand, and it has a a star on top, and it has all kinds of beautiful decorations on it, what do you think of? Christmas. Christmas. Christmas, right. That pine tree is called a Christmas tree, and it is a symbol of our Christmas holidays. Okay, Carly, if I point back here to the cross, and then I ask you, if you're out in the community and you see a sign with a cross on it, what do you think of? Christianity and the church, right. Okay. If I see a sign that has a circle, a big circle, and maybe a person smoking a cigarette, and the line goes through it, what does that mean? No, that's a symbol for saying this behavior is not okay. Okay? So those are symbols, okay? Now I'm going to point you in the direction of the altar. Do you see that pile of rocks up there? Does anybody know the official name for what that is called? Who said that? Say it loud. It's a cairn. It is a cairn, okay? And for today, I want a cairn is a symbol for direction. A cairn is, how many of you ever been hiking before out on the trail? Have you ever seen rock cairns like that along the trail. I'm seeing folks who just came from Acadia say, (laughs) yupper, I have. Those cairns are meant to give direction. And today, I want you also to think of those cairns. And I'm going to pass out some rocks. Everybody take a few. Take a few. Take a few. I'm going to ask you to make your own cairn. Right here, right now, in the present. Right. Right here, right now. See if you can balance those rocks up. Make a little tower of those rocks. While you're doing that, I'm going to ask the folks in the congregation, because there's big kids here too. What do you notice about that cairn up there? Something, anything. Something, anything about that cairn right there. And Heil, can you zoom in on that? Is that even possible? Shout it out, folks. What do you notice about that cairn? Shout it out, Pat. Uh, the middle one is more flat. Oh. The bottom one and the top one are similar colors. Okay. So there's three of them. Yeah. I hear Pastor Tom say there are three stones. He's, he thinks it's a symbol of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. What a guy, right? <laughs> what a guy. Yeah. For the big kids, yes. We look at symbols 
and it, with our understanding, we get different, different thoughts and different understandings. What else do you notice about those rocks? I did it. <laughs> she did it. <laughs> she did it. Keep it, keep it, keep it there. What do you notice about those rocks, Ashlyn? And, and what about the size of them? Do you notice? Do you notice something about the size? They're the same. They're the same in a way. Are they all the same size? In a way, sort of. Kind of, sort of, really? Truly? Really? Anybody else notice anything? Wendy? The base is the larger one. The base is the larger one. The middle sized one is in the middle, and the littler one is on top, right? Okay. Boy, symbol of laity, right? If a cairn gives direction, this is your lesson. Everybody look at me for a minute. If the cairn is a symbol of our laity, our older people have more life experience. They're bigger, aren't they? Our middle-sized folks, our teens, are kind of sort of in the middle, and our younger kids are right up top where they're the most important. And it's up to our laity to lift those younger ones up and to lead them in the right direction. Did you, did you do it? I'm so proud of you guys. You did it. Oh, I wish I had my camera. I wish I had my camera right here. Maybe later we can make them again, okay? So here you are. You are the laities, and the big kids help the littler kids, and the littler kids help the smallest kids. And they all work together to aim us toward Jesus. And that's all I've got for you today. So do you want to take your stones with you? You can, or you can put them back in here, and you can collect them later. You decide, whatever you would like to do. But let's pray. All right, I'm going to count down from five. Five, four, yet yeah, to decide what you want to do. Four, three... Two, one. All right, let's all stand up and pray in a circle. Let's do that. Because it's almost time for Sunday school. You did, you did, Chase. You did. All right. Ashley, it's okay. It's okay. You can collect it later. Let's all get in a circle. All right. Jordan, you can do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Jordan's here. Jordan is at the center of our circle, which is pretty cool. Okay, Father God, thank you so much for giving us the children today. Thank you for their ideas. Thank you for their sass. Thank you for their creativity. And thank you for letting us, the older children, lead them towards God. Amen. Amen. Okay, and it's off to Sunday school. There you go. There you go. Gather them up. Can you get them with your with your painting? Can you get them with your painting? Off you go. Thank you for sharing. Oh, okay. And on that note, it's now time for joys and concerns, where we share what's going on in our lives with one another and support one another through celebration and in prayer. Do we have any joys? I have a friend Dave visiting from Colorado for a few days. Great. Charlie's friend Dave is visiting from Colorado for a few days. Father Rock Academy adventures I got. Anyone else? Hi, Justine. My parents are coming to visit from Texas on Thursday. Great. Justine's parents are coming to visit from Texas. And I have a joy. We have more Texans here. If, if Andy Card was here, he would be so delighted. Um, I, I would like to share that as concern. <laughs> Just kidding. Your parents are awesome. <laughs> Great. So Justine's parents are coming and visiting. Are there any other joys?
is all healed and Praise God. they never found the the doctors never found like the initial cause of what was going on but we said a prayer here and now he's better so mm. and we have the power of prayer Praise God. So Stacy's husband, who has been having health issues, is, is all healed. Can you give us his first name? Jose. Jose, that's right. Thank you. Any other, Joyce? Uh, by the way, Frank and Karen, I was joking on that. They're probably watching online. <laughs> uh, the, uh, uh, obviously, our season hasn't gone the way we wanted to at times, but um, we, we, we kind of started a, a little bit of a ministry within the team, and, and Proud to say, I, I'm sure they're not all in church this morning, but uh, about 25 to 30 guys have been participating in devotional every week after our team meetings, and mm. so hopefully that's starting to kind of build and grow a little bit more, and, and uh, hopefully they're being touched by the, the, you know, the messages that are being shared, not only by me, but other players on the team, and uh, they're sharing in those things too, and so I'm, I'm just proud of what that's starting to kind of become. So That's That's awesome. So uh, Russell said that uh, the Ravens have not had the year that uh, the start of the year that he had hoped for, but there have been victories as far as building up uh, a, a ministry of, um, it, within the team and having a devotional where 25 to 30 of the players are taking part. Uh, and I think that that is also, so first of all, gracious Lord, Sorry if I've been forgetting to say that. Um, yeah, no, none of you, none of you, like get, get got on to me. You always get on to Pastor Tom when he does it. You're, you guys can remind me. But I think that that is also a really great story to tell on Laity Sunday because Russ, that shows that you are not just a coach to those players as teaching them how to play better football, but you are there and helping them to develop to be better men all around and be spiritually grounded. And so I just want to say, in appreciation of that ministry, gracious Lord. Do we have any other joys? And I know that there are more, but I just was so thankful that we, as the, in this church, have had a constant flow of people that have bought in to this community mm -hmm. and, and gracious Lord. Bless gracious this joy. Lord. Thank you. <clears throat> Richard. Uh, yes, I had the uh, pleasure Friday night to uh, witness open mic. A two-hour program of wonderful music uh, organized by Andy and performed by Andy and Charlie Derby and his company and uh, Reggie, who is with us today, that's going to perform. It was outstanding uh, music. So Richard was appreciating that we had a very full two hour long open mic session this past Friday, uh, and it was full of just uh, wonderful talent and fellowship. Uh, gracious Lord. Thank you. Uh, Richard also pointed out that, that Linda and others did their, their own ministry of preparation and hospitality and cleaning. So, gracious Lord. Yes. And I also think I, I failed earlier to repeat for our online viewers uh, that Susan had uh, lifted up the names of various lay leaders that we have had uh, and just people who have contributed the, their lay ministry to this church, uh, and that was greatly appreciated. Do we have any other joys? Okay. 
Oh, well, I have one for myself, which was uh, we had church conference uh, on uh, yesterday afternoon, and that went well. Uh, so I guess, gracious Lord. But also, Jess was helping to facilitate a very large town event at the same time. Um, and so we needed to arrange a babysitter, and we did. Um, it was actually Carrie who works in our child care, and she came with a craft uh, for the kids to do, and it was amazingly effective. And we booked her for two hours longer than we knew either one of our meetings was going to be so that we could... Uh, go to the Birchwood Inn and just sit at the bar together and hang out for a little bit, enjoy each other's company without children. So, <laughs> gracious Lord. Lord. Thank you. All right, do we have any concerns? I have a concern. The concern is for all those people who lost their phones and things like that. Because I was mm -hmm. Thank you. So Rich lifted up the people who have lost their homes in Florida and also those who are affected by the war in the Ukraine. And Rich, I, I want to again lift up the ministry of Our Lady because every Sunday you come carrying those concerns and you, you continue to remind us of, of those who are going through incredible hardships. And that is such a ministry that you provide us. So, are there any other concerns that you would like to share? Amy. Uh, prayers for the Jenny family on the loss of their husband and daughter. Okay. Prayers for the Jetty family for the loss of their husband and father. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Are there any others? Stacey. Uh, I think my two major ones this week is um, understanding where our public schools have gone to where they're at these days. I think trying to have some kind of understanding and it's like a battle, so like I need some 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 good strength prayers to do that. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm um, and then my cousin is still missing. So. And what? What is her name again? Her name is Brenda Kenny. Okay, so Stacy shared two concerns. The first is uh, she is having to deal with the, the challenges and shortcomings and, I'm guessing, bureaucracy of the, the public school system. And um, she's praying for, for strength. So, Lord, in your mercy. And just all the things that we as parents have to fight for, sometimes it can be very infuriating. Also, um, Stacy's cousin, who she has asked for prayers for before, Brenda is, is still missing. So, Lord, in your mercy. Thank you. Are there any other concerns to be shared? Oh, Heil. Yeah, I've got uh, two uh, friends that passed away this past couple of weeks. The first one, the name is Betty, a family friend. Uh, she was 92, a uh, wonderful life, well lived. And the second one is uh, Ray. He's a volunteer that I've had the pleasure to work with. Having a celebration of life today, and it's really a celebration. If uh, I added up all of the hours that he has volunteered for, it would be probably three or four full time jobs. So I feel like God will hold those up for us there. So, Heil asked that we hold in prayer and remember two uh, friends of his who recently died Betty, who was 92, and also. Ray, a very dedicated volunteer who today uh, his, his loved ones and friends, family will be gathering for a celebration of life. So both for the life that they lived and the encouragement they gave, gracious Lord, and also for all those who are grieving and missing them.
Lord, in your mercy. Thank you. Are there any other concerns? A surprise joy that someone wants to sneak in? Okay. Let us go in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, life is so full of challenges and suffering and loss, yet it is also full of miracles. It is full of triumphs, and it is full of people doing their best to following you and accepting the gifts that you give them, and turning those gifts into ministry. We are thankful for when we have loved ones, friends, parents, parents parents-in-law, coming to visit, coming so that we can share our life with them and cash up with them and be close together. We are thankful for the miracle of healing that's happened for Jose. And we pray that he feels our prayers and is continually sustained by our prayers and by your Holy Spirit, God. We are thankful for the spiritual fire that is currently growing within the Ravens football team, that the players are hungering to know you and to become stronger disciples in Christ with one another. And we are thankful for Russell being a leader and role model for them. We are thankful for all those who have built up this church family. We are thankful for all those who have built up us as spiritual people and have encouraged us and helped us to become stronger Christians. We are thankful for the ability to celebrate skills in music and creativity, and that on Friday we had such a big party that it went for two hours at the open mic night. And we are, we are grateful for the ways that we can open the doors to the wider community and invite people in and have fun on that Friday. God, we, as always, we continue to pray for those who have lost their homes or their livelihood in the hurricane in Florida. We pray for all those who are affected by the war in Ukraine, the the civilians, the soldiers on both sides, and also the leaders, that you will soften their hearts and help them to find a way to peace and justice and reconciliation. We pray for Stacy and all parents who have to struggle and fight against bureaucracies to do what is right for their kids. Please give them strength. Please also help the teachers in school systems who want to do the right things for their children, but also have to struggle in those systems. We pray for Brenda that wherever she is, that she is near you, that she knows your love. Please comfort those who are missing her, whose hearts are broken. Give them courage and strength of faith. And God, please be with the families and loved ones of all those who have recently passed, including Betty and Ray. We don't need to pray for them because we know that they are with you but give us comfort and courage and help us to remember what their gifts were and what they offered the world and help us to find ways to embody those in our own lives. And now, God, we will say the words that you taught your disciples to pray so long ago on a mountaintop in Israel. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. Our Old Testament scripture reading comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 27 through 34. And the word is, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will plant the kingdom of Israel in Judah with the offspring of people and of animals. Just as I watched over them to uproot and tear down and to overthrow, destroy, and bring disaster, so I will watch over them to build and to plant, declares the Lord. In those days, people will no longer say the parents have eaten sour grapes, the children's teeth are set on edge. Instead, everyone will die of their own sin. Whoever eats sour grapes, their own teeth will be set on edge. The day is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors, when I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was husband for them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor to say, or say one to another, know the Lord, because they will know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness, and I will remember their sins no more. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now will you join us in hymn number 593. Please rise if you're able.
may be seated. This is the time we bring our tithes and offerings to the Lord, both in word, actions, and finances. And you can also give online. Um, now the ushers will come forward. Thank mm-hmm. you. dedication. Holy God, as we offer our gifts to you this day, we pray that in our giving we may be connected to the reason why we follow and the reason why we give. You call us to be disciples who make disciples and all knowing who we are and why we are following. Help us avoid that distraction. The that desire to hear things, things that, that please, that please us, us and make the road easier, but that we will bring us to the kingdom of justice, justice mercy, and compassion you desire for us. In Christ, Christ we, we pray, pray, our guiding light. Amen. You may be seated. Our New Testament reading is from Luke 18, verse 1 through 8. It is a parable of the persistent widow, and the word is, Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and never give up. He said, In a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what the people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care about what the people think, yet because the widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry to him for help day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. At this time, uh, Reggie Gilbert, who is a member of the Hillsboro Methodist Church, is going to bless us with some music. my 
Good start where I accepted Jesus into my life. I'm a recovering alcoholic. I found the Lord in Florida, face first, on the beach in the sand. Crying out, Lord, what am I supposed to do? For some reason I knew to ask him. I didn't know the Lord. I kind of in my mind believed that there's God. I didn't know the Lord. Didn't go to church, didn't worship. But I need help. So he did. He took hold of my hand, picked me up, dusted me out. Cleaned me up of my addiction right then and there on the spot. No more alcohol, no more drugs, no meetings. God did it all. From there, I started to go to church. And shortly after going, I started to go to church in the year 2000. I had a large quarter grow into my neck, which also grew into my voice box. Being new to the Lord, I really didn't kind of know what to do, but I did. I prayed and asked again for his help. And with the church family that I had at the time and all the people that I didn't know, they all started praying also for me. And I prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, please let me have my voice because the surgeons told me when I took the quarter out, they were also going to have to take my voice box. So that meant that I would never talk again. So I prayed to the Lord, and I do believe I I heard him speak to me. And he said, Reggie, he says, I will hear you your voice on my condition. He says, I want you to send praise and worship for me the rest of your days. And my answer was, Lord, I don't sing. And his answer was, I didn't say that. He says, I want you to. So I went through the surgery because they had to go in and take the water out. But to the surgeon's amazement, the voice box was clean. We serve a God of miracles and heals. Just believe, church. Just believe. So as you can see, I started singing. And I started back down in Florida and I started singing with the soundtracks again out there. I hear the music and they play and you sing to them. So I started down there singing. And uh, about five years ago, he laid another one on me, <laughs> so to speak. He said, Reggie says, you're singing for me, but I want you to be you. I don't want you using other people's music. I want you to play guitar. So here we go again, Lord. I don't play guitar. So without any lessons or anything, whatever and stuff, I started with a little sixty-dollar guitar that I picked up, and uh, said, "Okay, Lord, let's do it." And everything you hear and everything I do, no lessons, no anything, comes straight from God. My singing, my music, some of the songs may sound a little familiar to you, but God gives them to me in a whole different way. So I sang differently, and I've changed some words to some of the songs. And just, uh, 
there to, to do and, and try to do my best of what he's asked me to do. And I can never, never repay him. For what he has done. Now, once again, I just want to let you know, and I want you all to know that we serve a God, a mighty God. Our God out miracles and healings. Just believe. Just believe. And if you'll pardon me, I need to clean up a little bit here. Right, this next song that I'm going to do is a song that the good Lord woke me up with at 2 o'clock in the morning. Talking to me about climbing the ladder. He says, if you'll keep climbing, he says, I'll hold on. I'll hold the ladder for you. Just keep climbing. Just keep climbing. So I put this song together with what he was talking about me through the night. Susan will now be offering her message titled Envisioning Justice Together. Together. I do. I was going to just slurp yours. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, thanks. Peace be with you. 
will you join me in a quick prayer before I start this? Because I'm nervous. Creator God, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, I ask that you speak through me today. Let my words be pleasing to you. Let my intent be pure. And let my message be true and loving. These things I humbly ask. Amen. So, it's Laity Sunday. Can y'all hear me? Okay, good. And I was thinking about these scriptures, and I thought, they're kind of weird scriptures for Laity Sunday. I'm going to have to work at this a little bit. So, you know me, I kind of read it a little bit, and then I pray on it a little bit, and then I usually talk with Heil or Andy or Jeff or somebody, you know, somebody about the scripture and, and where I'm going to go with it. And... The whole idea of justice came out of this big time. Both God's justice that may seem severe and the secular justice of our world that may seem skewed sometimes. So those are the thoughts that I'm going to kind of be exploring in in the concept of laity. All right? Now... The idea of people joining together and lifting up the Lord and the law in their hearts and minds is no new idea, is it? Jeremiah's prophetic writings come from around 625 years before Common Era. That's a long time ago. These are the years before the Babylonian exile and slavery of the people of Judah. Jeremiah writes of a time in which God will bring down justice on the people, the civilization of Judah that has fallen by the wayside, that has forgotten his law. And he's going to allow other kingdoms to dominate the people of the book. This will be a time when there are great injustices that will be exacted on his people by their captors. God seems really wrathful, doesn't he? But wait a minute. He also says, after great punishment will come rescue and renewal, and Jerusalem will be restored, and the children returning from their parents and their grandparents' tribulation will also be restored to prosperity. There will be animals in the fields, the city will be renewed, all will be rebuilt, And all will be right with the world. All will be well. Jeremiah assures his people that they will not be judged by the sins of their fathers. But they will start anew, taking responsibility for their own actions and behaviors and attitudes. Their own diligence and their own obedience. God promises to make this new covenant with the people of Israel in such a way that they internalize the law and write it on their hearts and on their minds, constantly praying to God. They will finally walk the walk and talk the talk. They will finally be living their faith completely. Now, I find it very interesting that the scripture says that finally the people will take the law and God's precepts to heart and mind when they're delivered from that great tribulation. It seems to me that they have had God's laws and precepts available to them all along, and that perhaps during that great tribulation, they will be in a constant process of going over those laws and those precepts as they band together to to survive this, to get through these tough times. Now, of course, God knows this and has planned this time of trial to remind his people of the importance of prayer and loving care, of faith and perseverance, of going back to the law and asking for help and comfort and justice from God. Perhaps this is the purpose of this great exile. There's a reminder to the people that you don't know what you got till, you, till it's gone. 
and it, till it seems that you've been abandoned, till you call out asking forgiveness, till you turn your heart and your mind and your soul back to what is good and loving and right in the eyes of God, till you act justly because of God's demand and not because of your own ego's arrogance. It's humbling, isn't it, when you really think about it? Now, Jeremiah's prophecy was not received well by many during his time. Yet it was a needed admonition and warning of what was to come and an encouragement to renew within the community and within each person faith in God's love and care and obedience to God's law and also commitment to act as God would act toward each other. Now let's skip forward because we know from other scripture that things do get better for the people of Israel and Judah, Israel slash Judah, but alas, the people again go their own way. Hundreds of years pass and man in his imperfection slacks off. The true believers, however, continue to try to live true to God's law. It is the society around them, however, impacted by countless kings and judges and priests and soldiers who do not necessarily embrace God's precepts. When we fast forward to the time of the ministry of Jesus, we see a woman who is in great need who comes before an uncaring judge, a widow, a virtual outcast after losing a husband, she asks over and over for him to give her justice against her adversary. She prays constantly for fairness and action. She does not give up. Now, Jesus uses her example to encourage his followers to never give up on God. God's justice will be handed down to those who pray and ask faithfully. People need not worry, for the Father is listening and working to give relief. But wait, what of that widow? Has that widow, and I ask you this to ponder on, you know, I don't know all these answers, but hey, I ask you, what about that widow? Has that widow been impatient for God's justice to be done? Has this stalling by the judge been God's way of teaching her that God does his work in his own time? Has her time of trial been a way for God to create the opportunity for her fellow community of believers to lift her up and to help her in her time of tribulation? To treat her justly, even if the secular law is not supporting her at the time? New way to, you know, ways to think about this. The widow finally does receive justice from the ambivalent judge, but now we go, well, what about the judge? If we think back to Jeremiah's prophetic writing, this judge will certainly have his time of justice when he comes face to face with God, and it doesn't look good for him, does it? Again, though, we got to think about the idea of his motives, his attitude towards God, his respect or lack thereof for the law and its place in protecting the people. And then, because this is a parable, and we know that parables are meant as a labyrinth of thought and introspection, we translate the judge's experience and the widow's experience and actions to our own lives. So I ask you, are we living with God deeply rooted in our minds and hearts? When we see injustice in the world, do we persistently pray to God to uproot it? Do we lift up our neighbors with love and respect? Do we listen to all and gently rebuke and forgive those with whom we have conflict or disagreement? Do we love unconditionally? as we are beloved? Probably not all the time, because hey, you know what? We're human, and therefore we are imperfect. But wait, 
Our brothers and sisters in Christ are here for us. We are the church. We can live responsibly with each other and help each other when the going gets tough. We can build community of prayer and action that becomes more loving and more inclusive. We can step out together in our communities to work for justice for all with God's laws and precepts tattooed on our hearts and minds. We are the laity of the United Methodist Church, and we are part of the beloved community of Christ, and we have got this. Laity Sunday is an excellent time to reevaluate our place within our church and our Christian world. It's a happy time to celebrate all that our brothers and sisters do within our community and for the kingdom of God. It's a time to look around and gather in those who may have fallen by the wayside because of sickness or depression, because of stressful life events, because of lifestyles that cripple or isolate, because of actions that have driven people away and isolated families and friends. It's a time to renew our commitment to Jesus' reminder to us all And I read from Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 through 44. Teacher, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. So happy Laity Sunday, everybody. Thank you for all that you do to glorify God and to fulfill his law. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. (laughs) Thank you so much, Susan. Can I just get a second round of amens just for what Susan gave and what Reggie has given as well? Thank you. So uh, our, our benediction is uh, Reggie is going to uh, offer more music ministry, but first I would like to, to offer you a blessing as we prepare to leave. You're pulling one of me. Are you going to skip the last thing? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'll bet. follow you on. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, there's a hymn that I somehow totally miss. I apologize to the choir. Uh, it is, O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee. It is found in uh, the hymnal. It's hymn number 430.
Please remain standing as I offer the blessing. Oh God, thank you so much for the people who you give us in this church community. Thank you for all the people you've planted in our lives. Thank you for those who have come before us, who lifted us up, who strengthened our faith, who named our gifts. Help us to be faithful to those gifts that you give us. Help us, one another, to encourage one another in the ministries that each of us have. Help each person in this room, dear Lord, know their ministry and be faithful to it, whether it is within this building or beyond. And God, we also know that one day our time in this race will come to an end and we will pass the baton on to those who comes next. Help us to welcome them. Help us to build up their faith. Help us to name their gifts just as you sent people to do that for us. And the people said, amen. Amen. Peace.